Hello friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel, Nastik Parasale. So this video is a part 3 of a GATE 2022 Biotechnology Answer Key. So if you didn't watch the previous two parts, then I'll give the link in the description. And thank you for the responses that you had given for the last two parts of this particular video. So in this video is a part 3 where I'll be discussing those questions that not been covered in two parts. So the question is that, first question is, the binding free energy of a ligand to its receptor is minus 11.5 kilojoules per mol at 300 kelvin what is the value of equilibrium binding constant and they are also given a value of r so this is a mcq type of question and not a nad type of question so let's see the solution so they are asking us to find the equilibrium binding constant and they had given a value of r a gibbs free energy that is delta g and temperature so the formula is that gibbs free energy is equal to minus rt ln of equilibrium binding constant that is keq determines the equilibrium binding constant so you should first apply all the values so before that make sure this r is given in joules so in gate biotechnology you should know whether the units are given in similar units or not so here r is given as joules so you should convert this gibbs free energy which is given in kilojoules to joules Okay, so that you need to convert them. So, this is what the answer. So, 11,500 joules per mole. And next, you need to apply the R value. Make sure you didn't forget to put this minus. Okay. And next, T is given as temperature that is 300 Kelvin and ln K equilibrium constant which is a uh, thing they ask us to find. Next, you need to rearrange the equation ln equilibrium constant is equal to you need to take all the value here they had given in multiplication so once it has come to the LHS side it will be coming as a divided side so make sure you are following me correctly and this minus and this minus will be cancelled out okay so before that you need to uh, convert this ln of natural logarithm into logarithm of equilibrium equation for that you need to multiply the equation into 2302 that is a formula for converting into ln into logarithmic and after you make a enough amount of calculation first you need to multiply then you need to divide you will get 2 it is a logarithm of equilibrium constant is 2 so they are asking only the equilibrium binding constant so keq that is equilibrium binding constant is equal to anti log of 2 which is approximately 100 so option number d is the correct option 100.5 next question a bacterial stain is grown in a nutrient medium at 37 degrees Celsius. Under aerobic condition, the medium is inoculated with 10 to the power of 2 cells from a seed culture. The number of cells in the culture is 10 to the power of 5 after 10 hours of growth. What is the doubling time of strain? They are asking us to round off to nearest integer. So, you should know they are asking us the doubling time. Okay. So, that is that is what they are asking. So, you should know uh, the formula is that g is equal to t by n so t is a time in heart and n is the number of generation so we know t is given or not okay so here he, they had given 10 hours of good so t is 10 so only thing is that we need to find only the n that is number of generation okay so formula for n is this particular thing n is equal to 3.3 .3 logarithm of n divided by n naught that is number of cells final and initial that is num total number of cells in a final count and total number of cells in a initial count so at last they says the number of cells in a culture after 10 hours is 10 to the power of 5 which i had given over here and initially they are inoculated only 10 to the power of 2 cells only okay so once you had put then uh, if it goes up then 10 to the power of 5 minus 2 which is 10 to the power of 3 that's what i had given over here friends so logarithm of 10 to the power of 3 is 3 so, n is equal to 3.3 .3 into 3 with this where a number of generation is approximately 10 that is 9.9. .9. So, once you had applied in this particular formula that is t divided by n where t is 10 and n is 9.9 .9, your doubling time or generation time is 1 now. So, the answer is 1. Next question, assuming the independent assortment and no recombination, the number of different combination of your maternal and paternal chromosome in a gamete of organism with the deployed number of 12. So, they had given uh, gametes of organism is having 12 chromosome, 6 chromosome from maternal side and 6 chromosome from paternal side. Okay, so they had given the deployed number that is n has been given, sorry 2n has been given. 
okay so this is simplest question asked in gate and also dbt bed jr of examination it will it will be asked so please make sure you are uh, working out this problem in further for that i mean videos or you can work by yourself okay so they ask us to find what is the no total number of different combination of chromosome so to find the total number of combination of chromosome the formula is 2 to the power of n where n is your 12 that is number of chromosome okay so 2 to the power of uh, 12 okay so totally 4096 combinations are possible so still this particular question is under confusion since they had given uh, deploy number therefore 2 n uh, 12 therefore if it is given like that means uh, n is equal to 12 by 2 therefore n is equal to 6 so 2 to the power of 6 only they didn't give haploid number here they had given deploy number so n is 6 sorry sorry for the confusion friends n is 6 haploid number whereas they had given deploy number where it comes 2 to 2 n is equal to 12. Therefore, n is equal to 6. So, the correct option is not 4096 combination. It is 2 to the power of 6 which is ultimately. Uh, so, the correct answer is 64. So, I even I get confused. Thanks a lot. I we found answer. So, the formula is 2 to the power of n. n signifies the haploid number of chromosome but here they had given deploy number of chromosome which is 12. Okay, so please make sure whether they are asking haploid or diploid. So, here comes n is equal to 6, 2 to the power of 6 is 64 combinations are possible. This is a mistake that I had made. Okay, please make sure you didn't make such a kind of mistakes in future examination because in CSA and general, they won't ask this type of question. Next thing is the easiest question. Figure below depicts simplified metabolic and transport reaction taking place in a production of production of B from A in a set. Okay, the subscript I refers to the intracellular metabolites. Here you can able to see A1, AI, BI, DI and CA. Okay, and R3 is the J3 action influx in G under pseudostatistics. Pseudostatistics is nothing but false steady state condition. The following reaction fluxes are available. So, false steady state. Okay, and they are asking us to find the transport flux of B. That is R4 we need to find the R4. Okay, so say from... R1 is given as 4 and R3 is given as 1. So, we can easily find the R2 that is 4 minus 1 is 3 is the value of R2 and they are asking us to find R4. Okay, so R4 can be easily find by subtracting R2 value and R6 value. R2 value uh, we found 3, R6 value is 1, so 3 minus 1 is 2. Therefore, R4 value is 2. The transport flex R4 value is 2. Okay. Next, specific growth rate of yeast having a doubling time is given 0 0.693 hours. Okay. And they are asking us to find out the, sorry, they are asking us to find out the specific growth rate of yeast for which the doubling time is 0 0.693. Okay. So, the formula is, this is an again another formula. T D that is doubling time is equal to 0 0.693 divided by mu which is a specific growth rate. They ask us to find this mu only so we can interchange the reaction 0 0.693 divided by doubling time. So here they had given doubling time is 0 0.693. So 0 0.693 divided by 0 0.693 therefore the specific growth rate is 1. Okay. This is the easiest question. I hope many of you had given this particular question is correct. And this is a needy type of question. If you are attempted, then correct. Then they will give a correct option. If you given the question, uh, answer is wrong. There is no negative marking. At the same time, they won't give partial marking also. Next thing is the degree of reduction of lactic acid. So, this is again a highly repeated question. Every year, at least one question will be asked from this particular concept. Degree of reduction of lactic acid and they had given a formula. Thank God they had given a formula. If they don't give a formula, uh, student like us, we don't remember the formula under. So, write this formula. Okay. So, you need to find out this is the simplest thing. So, degree of reduction means number of equivalence, available, equivalence of available electron per gram of carbon. So, first you need to find number of equivalence which is 3 into C plus there are 6. H is 6. 6 into H plus 3 into oxygen. C, the what is the valency of C? It is 4. What is the valency of H? That is 1. What is the valency of oxygen? That is minus 2. Therefore, 4 3s are 12, 6 1 and minus 6. This 6 and this 6 will get cancelled out. Okay. Then 
we had find out the number of equivalence of lactic acid is 12. Okay, this is a number of equivalence friends. This is not a degree of reduction. To find the degree of reduction, we need to divide this number of equivalence by ampere gram of atom. Per gram of atom carbon. So, here you can be able to see totally there are 3 carbon. Therefore, 12 divided by C, 4. So, this uh, tabulator column friends better try to remember all the degree of reduction of uh, methane, N-alkane, methanol, ethanol so that uh, in future even though you forgot to remember those things at least you can apply easily if you remember the, all those things just you need to mark up so that uh, you can save the time in gate examination at the same time you can save your marks also. So I hope many students will take this 12 as a degree of reduction. No, the degree of reduction is that you need to divide this number of equivalent by per gram of carbon. So totally there are 3 carbon so you need to divide by 3 which is 4. Next question, a fermentation broth of density 100 kilogram per meter cube and viscosity 10 to the power of minus 3 is mixed in a 100 liter fermenter using a 0 0.1 meter diameter impeller rotating at a speed of 2 per second. What is the impeller Reynolds number? So Reynolds number is again after this degree of reduction the Reynolds number is a highly repeated question. The formula for Reynolds number is diameter to the power of 2 into frequency that is impeller speed into density divided by viscosity. Diameter they had given 0 0.1 so 0 0.1 to the power of 2 okay into the impeller frequency which is nothing but speed of impeller. Here they had given impeller rotating at a speed of 2 therefore you need to put 2. Next is the density. Here they had given a fermentation broad density is 1000. Next they also given the viscosity which is 10 to the power of minus 3. All the value, all the units are similar. Kg, Kg. So, no need to convert your grams into kilogram and all. Next thing, you need to calculate all the values at loss. The impeller Reynolds number is 20,000. So, 20,000 is the correct answer. Next question is also an easy question but only thing you need to work on previous year questions, okay. Then you can definitely attempt this NEA type question with 100 percentage confidence okay so the amount of biomass in a reactor at the end of batch process is 50 gram okay so the amount of biomass in the end reactor at the end of the batch process 50 gram fed batch operation is initiated by feeding the substrate solution at a constant rate of 1 liter per hour and the concentration of the substrate in the feed is 50 gram per liter and the maximum biomass yield that is y to the power of m to the x s is 0 0.6 okay assuming a system is in quasi steady state so they get given the system is operating in a quasi steady state not in a steady state or a pseudo steady state they are asking us to find what is the maximum amount of biomass after 5 hours of feeding so the formula is here they had given x is equal to x naught plus f into s naught plus this biomass yield that is maximum biomass yield into time point that is t. So, x0 is nothing but amount of biomass at the end of the reaction that is 50. F is a flow rate. Okay. So, here you can be able to see constant flow rate is 1 liter per hour. Therefore, you need to put 1 and S0 is the substrate concentration at feed which is 50 gram per liter. Therefore, 50 and this signifies the maximum biomass still which is 0 0.4 and the time okay so the uh, biomass is operating for 5 years so you need to put 5 after you had made a calculation then you will get 150 gram which is a maximum amount of biomass after 5 years feeding so the next question is consider the growth of saccharomyces cerevisiae under aerobic condition in a bioreactor and the specific growth rate is given please note they had given specific growth rate okay the overall reaction process has been given and the heat combustion value for different product have been tabulated below so they had asked her about this heat combustion value they had introduced the concept of heat combustion and they are asked us to find what is the specific rate of heat production okay and they are also giving a values also in kilojoules per mole per hour. So, this is a reaction I had made friends. So, this uh, left hand side says the reactant and the right hand side says the product. We don't need to work off this uh, 10 to 10.35 oxygen and 10.8 hydrogen because this oxygen and hydrogen doesn't go under the process of combustion as you students know and they have also given a heat combustion. Simply we need to multiply. So, first thing is that this reactant 1 is C6H12O6, reactant 2 is NHD where O2 is not a reactant since the 
it under the tessin and the combustion and the product is again ECH 1.8 O 0.5 n 0.2 and the product number 2 is c 2 h 6 1 and they are also given a heat compression value so the formula to find out what what they had asked us to find specific rate of heat production they had asked us to find specific rate of heat production not the heat production so first we will find out the heat production the heat production is of a particular reaction is reactant minus product like you need to combine heat of combustion of this particular product is 2802 so you need to multiply 2802 into 2 that is coefficient of carbon is 2 you should not multiply the 6 into 2 12 they are asking only the heat of combustion of a product so here you need to multiply the heat of combustion along with the coefficient of this particular thing that is 2 okay and Next thing is the next reactant is this ammonia. Therefore, 383 into coefficient of ammonia is 0 0.2. So, you had given a value of this reactor. Okay. So, this reactant is we had find out the value of this reactor. Next is product. So, product number 1 is 560 into there is no coefficient is 1. So, 560 into 1 and next at last product number 2 is 1366. Okay, that is these 2H6O and the coefficient of this particular product is 0 0.2. So, you need to multiply 1366 into 0 0.2. After multiplication, you will get 4847. So, this is a heat production, but they are asked us to find the specific rate of heat production and here they have given a specific growth rate of yeast is 0 0.5. So, simply you need to multiply heat production along with the specific growth rate. So, 4847 into 0 0.5 and the answer is 2424 which is a specific rate of heat production of the organism. The next video, I will continue the same video since the video is getting little bit big. So, I will give a video number as a part 4 so we can refer and please do share this answer key with me any of your friends okay so that they too will get benefited thank you friends thanks for watching this video